Hi, this is Chef Janie Pendleton, and today I'm going to teach you how to make my special chocolate chip cookies. And let's get started. Okay, first we're going to start with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now, if you'd like, you can add a little bit of whole wheat flour in there. Exchange it maybe a half a cup per half cup. That's up to you, but I use all-purpose flour. Okay, now on top of the one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, we also need one and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda. We need one and a quarter to one and a half teaspoons of salt. We need three quarters of a cup of butter. And then we need a little over a quarter of a cup of Crisco shortening. This gives it a nice crispy texture on the outside yet the butter keeps it nice and chewy on the inside. We need three quarters of a cup of the light brown sugar and we need three quarters of a cup of regular white sugar. We need one teaspoon of vanilla and we need a half a teaspoon of butter flavored imitation butter flavoring. We need two large eggs. We need a half a package of this jello vanilla flavored instant pudding. Remember it's instant pudding and pie filling. We're just going to use half the package and this is a uh, 3.4 ounce package. Again that's a 3.4 ounce package. We need a quarter to a third of a package of cream cheese and you can see I've kind of chunked it off here to kind of show you the amount that I'm going to be using there. The size of my finger there. Probably less than a tablespoon of syrup your favorite kind of syrup. Again, that's going to help give it stay power. My cookies last longer uh, in the freezer and out of the freezer just because of the syrup itself. It really helps. You're going to need a package of your semi-sweet or your milk chocolate brand uh, chocolate pieces, okay? Any brand will do as long as you have, you know, about 11 ounces. I go sometimes, since I'm making, this makes a little bit more, so sometimes I like to mix a little bit of semi-sweet and the milk chocolate together. And you can even put white chocolate in this if you like. So let's go ahead and let's get started. I've got my regular paddle bit on here. There we go. Lock down my machine. Make sure everything's clean. Make sure the machine's working. There we go. And we're just going to start by adding our two and a half cups of flour. Now this does not have to be exact. Okay, I'm just going to drop that in. And we're going to grab another half cup there. There we go. And that's that for the flour. A little bit of a mess. Now I just run my machine for just a second here and that kind of sifts the flour up a little bit. Gives a little bit fluffier cookie there. To the flour I'm going to add a teaspoon. And an eighth to a quarter of salt. That's plenty. I'm also going to add a healthy teaspoon of baking soda. And another eighth, another eighth to a quarter. Okay, so that's one and an eighth to one and a quarter of baking soda, and one and an eighth to one and a quarter of salt. Okay. Now we're just going to blend that together. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, we've just put our flour in a separate container, and we've just put our butter and our shortening back in the bowl and we're just going to cream it for a few seconds here. There we go. And now we're just going to add our three quarters of a cup of sugar. Again, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Now I don't pack my brown sugar, you can, but that's not necessary. Okay, we're just going to cream that in. And while that's uh, blending nicely, we're just going to add our quarter to one-third 
block of cream cheese. We're going to cream that in there. We're going to add a tablespoon of our syrup. It's a good squirt. That's all you need. We're going to add our eggs. Yep. Now we're going to add about a half a package of this vanilla pudding. Not quite half. I go about a third. And that's plenty to give it a nice, nice flavor. Again, it helps keep the, the cookie soft. Turn that on stir. And we're just going to add a teaspoon of our imitation butter. And let's give the vanilla a shake. And we're going to add a teaspoon of our vanilla. We're going to shut this off for a minute and we're going to scrape down the sides. Now here I just have some Glabber Girl baking powder. If you're gluten free, be sure and use a gluten free version or an aluminum free version. But I'm just going to get a scant, oh, I don't know it's called a scant. It's like a level teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. So it's a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm just going to kind of lightly sprinkle that in here and kind of mix that in as well. I forgot to add that. That little bit of baking powder really helps. What we're going to do is we, we scrape the sides of the bowl. So turn that back on here for a minute. And we're going to slowly add in. You see the consistency here. And we're going to slowly add in the flour. Okay, now again, I just scraped it down, ran it for a second, and now I'm just going to check the consistency. Okay, I think it needs a little more flour. Just a little more. I've been doing this for so long, I'm going to say about a, about a third of a cup more. Let's turn that on. I don't have my flour guard on. See how that looks? Maybe just a little more. Just want to keep adjusting up until you get it just right. Okay, and that was a total of about three cups of flour. Let that run for a minute. We're going to shut it off. Well, actually, we're going to put it on stir. We're going to put that on stir, slow it down, and we're going to add our chocolate chips. And like I said, I like to add a little extra chocolate chips there. You don't want to add too many extra. And then there you go. Our dough is done. And I'm going to show you again once more this consistency. I'm going to unlock my machine. Let's see if we can show this to you. Okay, you see that? It's a little sticky, not too hard, but not too drippy. It takes a minute for it to drip off there. Yet it's still clingy, okay? That's about right, right there. And what you wanna do, now what you're gonna do now is you're gonna bake up a half a pan of these and you wanna check and make sure that your uh, flour consistency is right. If it's too loose, you won't get that cracking, you won't get that cracking in the middle, that, that puffiness cracky. Uh, look to it. So we're going to do a couple of cookies on a cookie sheet on a, in a 370 degree oven because mine's convection. If it's, your oven's not convection then you want to go 375. Okay so I come over here to the oven and I've lightly sprayed these with some Crisco butter spray. I mean very just lightly. And I just kind of took my hand and kind of went like this over my cookie sheets. Okay. And I've let my dough rest here for about five minutes. That ensures that the flowers are nice and soft. And then we're going to drop these onto cookie sheets in about one and a half teaspoonfuls. And I have my trusty cookie dropper. I just have to find it. Here it is. See, I just have my trusty uh, cookie dropper here. 
And this right here will help you see the consistency. And we just drop it on just like that right there. Okay? And I'll do a couple more here. You don't have to overcrowd them. All right, now we got them a nice even size, and we're going to slip these in the oven at, like I said, convection oven's 370, a regular oven's 375. You always want to drop it five minutes on the degrees for a convection oven, or unless you've tested your temperature of your oven, then um, you want to make that adjustment. And it's usually a five to seven degree adjustment. Okay, so mine's set at 370, and I'm going to slip these in for eight to ten minutes, and we'll be back in a minute. This is just a suggestion. If you want to make your own vanilla, you just use 10 to 12 vanilla beans. Let's hold it up to the light and see if you can see the vanilla beans through there. I guess you can't see them really in there too well. There, maybe you can see them in there there. Can you see them? Make sure the standard liquid. And here I just use a real expensive Myers rum. It's really good stuff. Uh, or Sailor Jack rum, I believe is the other one. And um, Or you can use vodka. I like to use rum. And uh, you just let this sit in the cabinet, shaking it once or twice a week for about two months. And then you can start using it after about a month and a half, two months. And this will keep for up to probably two or three years, four years in your um, cabinet. And you want to add a little of this, just a drop, to your chocolate chip cookies. And of course the alcohol cooks off. But this really gives your chocolate chip cookies the best taste and my kids are always like why is your chocolate chip cookie so great well I add a lot of love and my homemade vanilla I add that butter uh, flavored extracts and I blend this vanilla flavoring in last okay and it just takes a half to a whole teaspoon of this vanilla and you really have the best tasting chocolate chip cookies okay so follow my recipe and I'll be back in a minute. 